The honeymoon phase is officially over, and after six months with this camera right here, the Fujifilm X106, here is my brutishly honest opinion about it. Hey, what's going on? Hope you're doing all right. My name's Matt. This is Dwyer Creatives, and today I want to go over my six month review on this camera right here. Now this is the Fujifilm X106. I know that a decent amount of people have gotten it, but even more people are still waiting for it. So will it be worth the wait? Now, if you are a true beginner and just getting into cameras and this will be your first camera, I do have like a beginner's playlist. Definitely check that out. If you're a seasoned pro, I'd skip right over that. Now I am going to be looking slightly off track every now and then just to make sure I stay on point with all my notes. A little background, right? I am familiar with this camera because right here is the Fujifilm X105. This was my EDC camera or my everyday carry camera before I got the Fujifilm X106. So when I saw it was going to be released, 40 megapixels opposed to 26, it had IBIS and for me I wanted more of that little video aspect even though I haven't really fully used that to the full capability of that yet. But that's something that I wanted to so I went ahead and upgraded it. Now on the night or morning of the release, I ordered this on March 20th, about six minutes after they opened their orders on b and Photo. And I believe I was in the third shipment going out. I received mine on February 15th. And being that today is, let me double check the date. So right now, as of recording this, it is September 7th. So that's pretty close to six months out. This is my everyday camera, so I have gotten a lot of usage out of this camera. Now, as I said, this is going to be kind of replacing my Fujifilm X100 5 as my everyday carry camera. For me, I made a kind of movement towards carrying a, a dedicated camera with me all the time. I know, of course, we have a phone, but for a lot of the time, I just want a camera. This one allows me to go fully manual, or if I want, I can shoot in auto, has the film sims for quick uploads of photos if you don't want to edit them. And for me, the super compact size allows me to throw it either into my sling bag with all my other little EDC items I carry with me every day. Or if I want, I can throw it into a dedicated pouch I have by Wutong Craft. And I do have a video for that if you want to check that one out. It works perfectly, so I'm always able to keep a dedicated photo camera with me. And I say photo camera with me because most of the time when I'm doing video, I'm going to be shooting either on my Canon R6 or my DJI Osmos Pocket 3, which I'm currently recording on. In terms of the video aspect, I haven't used it a whole lot and I've been trying to use it a little bit more and more. And overall, it's been really pleasant. I do like the 6.2. It allows you to crop in a little bit if you need to and gives you plenty of information to work with. The highs, the lows have been pretty good when I'm going there and editing. As a whole, it shoots up to 6.2 at 30 and does 422 with 10 bit. A really nice option to have from something so compact and that I can carry with me all the time. I'm gonna cut in here real quick because I forgot to mention this talking about video and everything, and photos. One of the biggest things is how is the autofocus? Now, when it comes to Fuji, they've been kind of on the slower end of things especially for me coming from Canon where it's really quick. Now for my purposes, in terms of the tracking modes, I've only really used the people, eye focus, head focus, face focus, whatever you want to call it. And it's been pretty on point for me. Sometimes I'll have trouble distinguishing who exactly I'm looking at, but for the most part, it's pretty on point. It's definitely quicker than the five. The other mode that I pretty much use is I'll use the single point because when I'm working with vehicles and stuff, I know exactly where I want especially if you're going at like F2, maybe you're opening up wider where it's not as specific, but for me, I'll use that single point and it's been really good for everything that I needed. It's been quick. So for autofocus, I definitely think this is an improvement. And if you're looking to upgrade, this would be something that you should consider. Now back to it. In terms of battery life, how long does this last you? Now for me, I don't do any really heavy shooting. I'll go out to say like in car event, take a lot of photos. I'll go to a family event, take a lot of photos. And I'll use like uh, this past weekend for Labor Day weekend. I went out, I was with my family, three day weekend. I never needed to change my battery, but I'm also not taking million photos like I would in a professional setting. For another example would be for a car event, say the Caffeine and Octane here in Georgia that they run first of every month. Hopefully see you there. Um, <laughs> I'll go out, fully charged battery, and 
it'll last me the entire hour or two that we're there. I mean, I don't really have any issues with battery life. And again, I'm not using this in a professional setting like I use my Canon R6. So I don't have to really worry about it. I do keep a spare, but that's just something to think about. And in terms of like EDC, if I'm not using it for any specific purpose, I'll keep this in my bag for a week or two and not really have to worry about it. I'll just top it off and and I'm good to go. Now, going back to how compact this camera is, right? I mean, really look how small it is. It is super compact, and when you're walking around, say for me, like I use again at Carven, or if you're doing street photography, people really don't really notice. You're able to, if you run it in the bag, pull it out, take your photo, put it back in your bag, keep it in your hand. It's not really something that sticks out a whole lot compared to, say, like my Canon R6, 24 to 70 or 70 to 200, that's a massive camera lens, right? And people will notice and they will see you taking photos. So that's something I really, really love about this camera is how discreet it is and the fact that you're able to just blend in with everyone else. Now, one of the things that drew me to Fuji for my 5 and my 6 and even my wife's uh, X-Pro2 and the rest of the Fuji film cameras are the film simulations. I really enjoy being able to take a photo and just post it right up and just crop it and not have to do any editing. Of course, the film simulations were in my 5 and with the 6, it's just on point there too. I really dialed in a few Fuji recipes that I really enjoy. And if you're looking for any recommendations, I have them in my 2 Minute Tuesday, so check them out, Fuji recipes. But also check out uh, Fuji X Weekly, that's where I go to start and then I'll tweak it from there. Another software program would be the app. I haven't run into any major issues with that. You're able to download your photos pretty quickly and you're able to get your software updates from it. Uh, another software that you can get with it is Fujifilm XRAW Studio. And this is where I shoot both in JPEG and RAW so that I'm able to use this to the fullest ability besides having the RAWs as a backup, right? So in Fuji XRAW Studio, you're able to go into your camera and go ahead and set all of your Fujifilm recipes, which I have a video for that, of course, right? And if you want to see how your Fujifilm recipes would look, you can go ahead and if you have a photo, go ahead and edit that, see how everything lays. Also, if you want to carry kind of like unlimited Fuji recipes, I do have a little hack for that using the app. So check out the video, right? In the Fuji XRAW Studio, it just gives you ability to play around with things. Definitely check it out. I think it's well worth downloading to your computer if you are into that. Now for the few things I was looking to, as for reasons of why I upgraded from my 5 to my 6, right? The video, which I did mention, and then 40 megapixels to 26. How does that really work? Of course, you know, again, I do have a video for that if you're interested in it. It allows me to take a photo and if I need to, punch in a little bit more, get a little tighter crop. And I really enjoy having that ability. Don't use it all the time, but I do use it here and there. The other aspect is the IBIS. It's a six stop IBIS. And for me, there's two things. Most of my work I shoot handheld and I don't really use a tripod or even a gimbal. So having IBIS and shooting at a slower shutter speed, you can definitely tell how it does help you a little bit. I say that because like, if you've been taking photos or videos for a very long time, you kind of gotten some sort of technique to help you with it. But the IBIS does allow you to do that a little bit more and I think is worth upgrading. Now, the one thing I'll note is when I'm walking around with this in my hand, I'm gonna hold these Peak Design clips down. I don't know if you can hear this. I'm walking around, I can hear the IBIS in there moving and shifting around. And honestly, that makes me uncomfortable. Moving part, just shaking around in there. I kind of wish it would lock down when it's not in use, but I haven't had any issues in six months, so hopefully that won't be an issue in six years, right? Now, another thing that is kind of in between, right, is it has a four-stop internal neutral density filter, which is great. I love that it has an internal ND. For me, I've used it a few times taking photos, I've definitely used it taking videos. Now, if you are going to add like 6.2 and really kind of push that it's kind of a video camera, you really need something more than four steps. When I'm shooting with my R6 and I'm outdoor, especially midday here in the south, I'm using like my variable six to nine stop. I just wish that maybe it was an eight stop. It's just a want and it's not a huge thing. 
but it is something that I wish it did have. Now in terms of memory cards, it has a UHS one slot. I wish it was a two, but it's not a huge deal breaker. I have done some speed bursts, multiple photos, and haven't run into the issues of like the cache backing up or anything. And then uploading things, I'll just pop the card out, throw it into a card reader. Not ideal. I'll go ahead and buy a UHS two card so that I have that speed of when it's downloading to my computer. It's still capped at that UHS one speed though. So I guess a little pro tip right there, get the faster card, even though your camera can't use it, your card reader can. Overall experience, do I think this camera is worth it? Is it worth the price tag? Because it is a little pricier out there. Now I'll divide this up into a few categories, right? If you're a beginner and looking to get your first camera, and I know this may be a little controversial, I do think that this is worth it. And I say that for a few reasons, first of all, it is set up like a kind of classic camera. So it reminds me of using my Canon A1. It really has that like camera camera experience that a lot of people are expecting. You can shoot it in automatic, aperture priority, shutter priority, whatever you really need to if you're not too familiar with how to use a camera. In the same breath, you can also shoot it in fully manual and you're able to shoot both in JPEG and RAW. So if you want to just use a Fuji film sims, you can do that and upload it. If you want to take your photos and kind of go in and play with them and learn how to edit, you can do that too. And overall, it is not a big and heavy camera. It is pretty compact. And I know that it is definitely on the pricier side because if you take care of these cameras, they will last forever. And I'll use my wife's X-Pro2 as an example. We've had that for, I want to say like five, six years. She got that second hand. So it's been around for a really long time and still works perfectly as the day we got it. As I said also, Fujifilm simulations, those are super popular on TikTok and social media right now. Now, if you are someone upgrading from the five to six, I have three questions for you. Do you need IBIS? Do you need 40 megapixels? And then are you going to be using it more for video and taking advantage of that 6.2 at 30 with the 422 at 10-bit? For me, this was a no-brainer. And I know at the time I was kind of in between, but using this more and more, I definitely would say that I wanted all three of those. And I say those are wants and not needs. So for me, as someone who upgraded from the five to six, that is 100% worth it for me. If you are not 100% on those three, enjoy your five. I might hold off, honestly, just because there is such a long wait for them if you're not already in line. I've seen people talking out to possibly December or into next year. That's a long time, right? Especially put all that money down. It is an expensive camera. It's not cheap. I mean, it's all relative, right? So in the camera world, but for most people right now, I think that this is not a cheap camera. It's not something that they just have laying around ready to go. So if you have a five, enjoy the five. And I'm just gonna leave this kind of here. So let me know your thoughts and comments if you have any questions about the Fujifilm X100 or five or six. If you have any comments in general, just drop them down in the comment section below. And as always, so hold on real quick. And I'm gonna be dropping two links for this. Something that I really enjoyed with this camera is that they do have aftermarket support for parts, right? So I was able to get a filter ring adapter really quick. I was able to get a UV filter, which I don't use really quick. Polar Pro came out with a CPL kind of black mist filter really quick. And I've been using that every day, link right here for my camera. And then things like the LensMate thumb grip make the camera a lot more usable. So it makes it a lot more enjoyable, link for that right there. So there's all these aftermarket parts that really make your camera more enjoyable to use or aesthetically pleasing, whichever you're looking for. And then also uh, the lens hoods, there's a few different options out there. You can kind of customize it to what you want. If you want that little thumb shutter button, don't recommend it. You have a bunch of different colors and styles for that. If you want a body for it, they do have, I think it's small rig makes a little L grip kind of thing for it. So there are options to customize your camera to the way that you want it. Now I really am gonna end this here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.